Green Economy, 8011. The eminent behavioral scientist, Dr. B.F. Skinner, sees each of us as wholly determined by our environment. Through evolution, the environment selected the behaviors that survive in our genes, and the social and physical environment shapes each of us in daily life. If you would control or change human behavior, you must control and redesign the human environment. A token economy is applied behaviorism, the theories and principles first formulated in Dr. Skinner's laboratory put to work in the real world. Token economies and other behavior modification programs are spectacularly successful when compared with traditional therapy techniques. However, Dr. Skinner's critics claim that such controlled environments are manipulative and tend to treat symptoms instead of solving human problems. Dr. Skinner sees these techniques as valuable ways of protecting individuals from mistreatment in situations where compassion has been notably lacking or has failed. There are five great classical examples of mistreatment. The care of old people, old folks' homes, the care of small children who have been deserted by their parents, orphans and that sort of thing, prisoners, psychotics, and retardates. Now, why have these always been classical examples of mistreatment? Not because passionate people were not involved there, but there was, these people cannot counter control. They can't do anything against those who were working with them. Old people are too old, children are too small and too little. Prisoners are there <coughs> under armed control, and they haven't, unless they manage to get some guns somewhere. And psychotics and retardants are unable to escape from or counter control. And under these conditions, the most compassionate person deteriorates, and he becomes careless, then callous, and then cruel. This has happened again and again and again. Now, there's no, no help for this in trying to find compassionate people. You put them into that system and they'll deteriorate and they'll become less compassionate. What you want are the counter-controlling effects. You want to make sure the treatment of one kind is, is condoned, treatment of another kind is, 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 is opposed. Well, perhaps we'd better talk about some of the terms so that we'll yeah. be sure exactly what we mean. Uh, what is operant conditioning? Now, rewards and punishments are what the layman thinks of. Well, they're special cases, but they're not general enough to, uh, to, to cover the thing. You get an organism doing something, and if you then make a reinforcer contingent upon what he's doing, he'll tend to do it again. And the reinforcers you use in the laboratory are the simple ones, like food for a hungry organism or water for a thirsty one. But in daily life, all kinds of things are, are reinforcing. The word reinforce means to strengthen. It doesn't mean to weaken. And a, a positive reinforcer strengthens when you present it, contingent upon behavior. Why are the ways that culture now uses to control behavior so ineffective? We're afraid of effective control. What will be done with this power? So we go right on teaching in the most inefficient ways. This leaves it up to the individual to learn in spite of bad teaching. Well, I could, I'm absolutely sure I could go into a school system in a big city if I had the chance. Uh, I could give students positive reasons for coming to school, sitting down and getting to work and learning things and having a fine time doing it. And when you came into the school and made children want to come to school and want to learn, you would be exercising control over their behavior. That's right, and, you, and uh, you people would, would jump on you. I'll give you a very good example of that. Uh, as a, a, a girl who teaches in the sixth grade in a school, I think it's in Lexington, Kentucky. She's black, and I suppose most of the kids in the class are black, possibly all of them. She had a difficult situation. They would not do their homework. They'd come in in the morning. What do you do? You can't spank them every day for not bringing their homework in. In fact, they're probably proud of the fact they get spanked if you do spank them. Um, they would not sit down and work in, in the room. They'd run around the room 
what do you do? Send them to the principal once in a while, but it's not going to get you anywhere at all. But she had read a book of mine, and she decided to try this out. And she des designed a very ingenious system. Every, month, every Friday afternoon, there was a lottery. Uh, names were drawn out of a jar, and uh, the child who won um, got a prize, which had been visible on the wall all week long. A little transistor radio, perhaps. Or one week, it was Halloween coming up, and it was a Halloween costume. Every Monday morning, she'd bring in this prize, put it up there, and the, and the kids knew that on Friday afternoon, one of them would get it. Well, any, any pupil who brought in his homework could write his name on a, on a tag and drop it in the jar. And any people who, who, any people who did, did the assignment in the arithmetic, as soon as he finished, and it was all right, he could write his name on it and drop it in the jar. Well, she had changed her life completely. It cost her six, five, six dollars a, a week to buy a little, little prize. She said it was well worth it because she never, they always did their homework. They all quietly listened to her because they, they knew that if there's something she said might be the thing that they could be used to get their name in us again. Well, I, I don't know what has happened to that, how long it's run. But people will say, oh, but she was bribing them, you see. This is bribery, she's manipulating. They don't realize that for centuries, the very same thing is going, has been going on, except that it was aversive. You, you threaten punishment. And there are schools now, not very far from here, where the child doesn't bring his homework in, has to hang, hold out his hand and get slapped with the rulers. It's going on right now, you see. And there are great cries, bring back the cane. That's what will restore discipline to our schools. Now, I don't like um, punitive control. I don't particularly like uh, this rather conspicuous positive reinforcement with a lottery at the end of the week. But at least it solves the problem. Meanwhile, those kids, when they did their homework, they were learning something. They were learning something all, all day long in those schools. Now, that is a rather crude example of, uh, by a, a, a very bright girl who, who knew, that, knew the essentials but could have designed better contingencies if she'd known still more. That, of course, I think can be done all the time. I think uh, an experiment that was done at the uh, National Training School for, for Boys in Washington three or four years ago is a very good, is a very promising kind of thing with respect to what might be done now, that was a token economy, wasn't it? Well, it was, it was a credit economy in which um, the, the boys were able to improve their life in the institution very substantially by learning things, acquiring skills, and, uh, and uh, preparing themselves, really, to live more effectively when they got out. As I understand the way that community worked, they, were, they could do, choose to do nothing, and they received a minimal... Then That's right. If they, want, they could go on relief, as the word yes. was. They could sleep on a pad in a dormitory. They could <clears throat> eat nutritious but not very interesting food and sit around all day. But if they wanted to, to, to earn points, <clears throat> they could get better food, more interesting food, access to game rooms, pool tables. Uh, they could buy time off. And Justice Berger recently suggested that prisoners be allowed to shorten their sentences by learning something while they're in prison. And uh, remember that you've got a great reinforcer, a great positive reinforcer yes. with a prisoner. Just give him some time off. So it really takes what you mentioned before, a very careful study of the whole situation. Yeah, absolutely. That's all, there is. That's all I'm suggesting, is that we look at the various ways in which behavior is controlled and uh, make sure that, that the, these systems are, are more effective than they now are. There's no question that we can have better incentive systems, we can have better ways of getting people to behave well um, in, in traffic, for example, the one simple case of legal behavior, illegal behavior, uh, schools, care, uh, the care of retardates and, uh, and psychotics and so on. A stands for Program for Adolescent Community Education, P-A-C-E. The essential idea here is that we feel that the behavior itself is what's important. It's not some underlying conflict. It's not something wrong with the psyche, but it's his behavior, his or her behavior, which has gotten them extruded from the community, which has gotten them in trouble with their teachers, with their parents, and so forth. For example, uh, we may have a youngster who doesn't perform well in school. He's frequently truant. Uh, when he is there, he's a class clown, throws books, talks out of turn. He's got a whole raft of deviant behaviors. In this particular case, we probably ask ourselves the question, does he have the appropriate behavior for that classroom situation? The problem may be that the youngster doesn't know how to read. Very frequently we find that if we can teach the youngster how to read, all of these other deviant behaviors will drop out. He's got the appropriate behavior he needs when he gets back into his public school setting. Now, one of our major teaching techniques here 
is a token economy with the students. And a token economy very simply is a structured learning situation. Uh, tokens are little plastic chips and our students earn their tokens in a wide variety of ways. Uh, one thing that's common to these different ways to earn tokens is that it always involves learning more appropriate behavior, better ways of handling situations. So a child may earn tokens uh, for getting up on time, for cleaning up his room area, going to school, producing in school, participating in therapy sessions. Now the tokens in turn are taken and traded in for a wide variety of possible rewards. One of the things that kids can spend their tokens on is to use our billiard room. Okay, guys, time's up. Cost you another blue token for another half an hour. Time in the billiard room is paid for with tokens. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you guys got another half an hour. The tokens are our method of tying together appropriate behavior and the reinforcers we have to offer. Includes things like home visits, town trips, living accommodations, meals. Ten, and you're paying me three for breakfast. Might include luxuries like commodities, candy, cigarettes, nylons. How does this differ? from the more traditional approaches that have been tried with teenagers, or, or with anybody for that matter. And, and the major difference is this focus upon teaching new, more appropriate behaviors. Okay, a second difference, I think, is in terms of how the staff reacts to the youngsters. In a more traditional kind of approach, uh, the emphasis might be on loving and understanding the youngsters, regardless of their behavior. In a behavioral approach, we want people who are warm, who are accepting, who can praise but we want them to reserve this warmth and feeling for appropriate behavior and ignore or not pay attention to the inappropriate behavior. Now, an important thing to realize is that the token economy provides a general framework, and a lot of the more traditional kinds of therapy techniques occur within this framework. Take the example of a group therapy session. There may be some students in that session who are earning tokens for making a contribution to the group. But another student sitting in the same therapy session may be earning tokens for not talking so much. We're not talking about any person, I mean, by herself as one person. We're talking about the whole group or the whole world or whatever, that they can't blame the past for what's happening in the future. I mean, you can't go around saying, well, my mother did this to me, so that's why I'm getting put in a jug like that. You can't say that because people's not going to listen to it. Now, each student, in turn, knows exactly what he has to learn when he's with us. And he even participates in determining what he has to learn. <laughs> okay, is this fair or unfair? Unfair! unfair. Why is it? Okay, how are you handling it? In this classroom, each student's working on a different task and earning tokens for doing something different, depending upon where he is academically. One for directions, two for directions, and two tokens. Good. One advantage of being able to individualize the instruction for the students is that they are highly successful in school. Many who haven't had any success at all back in their public schools. We find that after a period of time, they start to enjoy it so much that the token reinforcement is no longer necessary. They're now caught up in the task. They're now enjoying themselves. They're now being successful. Do you understand, Rob? Yeah. Do you understand, Pat? Yeah. Very good. All right, let's begin. Three. Great. Two. Two. Right. Thanks. Four. Right. Pat. Doing great. Keep it up. Besides purely academic subjects, taught in our school. We also focus in on things like physical education. The activity in the weight room may look unstructured, but it's important to realize that the kids are each earning tokens for working on their own particular physical fitness program. That's perfect, perfect, beautiful. There you go. While the emphasis of the program is on positive reinforcement, we find that on occasion it's helpful to use punishment. Some theorists, Dr. Skinner, for example, at one point said that if you were really good at using positive reinforcement, you'd never have to use punishment. 
we find though in a living situation with teenagers living together sometimes it's helpful to tie together punishment and reinforcement an example would be the use of our time out room and in this particular kind of a situation we have a youngster who is behaving aggressively towards another youngster he'll get one warning staff member will say essentially cool it he's not going to cool it though the staff member will say all right you've earned time out and he's then escorted to a very bleak room with nothing in it and he spends an allotted amount of time in this room if he calms down and spends a certain amount of quiet time in the room he then leaves the room now when you look at this technically it really combines three different things first there's punishment for the aggressive behavior second thing that happens is once he's in the room if he continues to shout and beat on the door that continuing aggressive behavior is extinguished it's ignored if he calms down and he's a quiet for an allotted period of time he gets out of the unpleasant situation getting out reinforces quieting down now we want the youngsters to be ready to return back into a public setting back into the real world and there's not going to be somebody there with a bag of pennies giving them pennies every time they perform appropriately so at the same time that we're trying to uh, get the behavior started and teach the behavior with monetary reinforcement our tokens we're also very much concerned with having the students become more responsive to higher levels of reinforcement like grades teachers approval uh, the enjoyment that comes from being right say on an academic task we try and accomplish this weaning off of the tokens in two related ways. One way is every time we give a token, we give praise and approval. Token, because you've been working for 10 minutes. Right. Another way we try and accomplish this is that the program is set up so that a kid passes through a number of levels. When the uh, student first comes in, he's a freshman, there's a heavy use of token reinforcement someone's given him a token for just about everything he does a lot of immediate reinforcement for behavior on the other hand when he's a senior in the program he gets one set paycheck once a week and he's expected to perform at a relatively high level not for money any longer but for things like grades approval uh, the fun of doing something right very good Great, thank you. Keep it up. There's two different groups of youngsters in the PACE program. One group are of normal intelligence, and they've come to us uh, because they've had problems in school or with their parents, or someone has designated that they're emotionally disturbed. Another group of youngsters are retarded. They have some kind of intellectual impairment. Many of our students, when they go back into the community, won't be returning to public school. They'll instead be going to some kind of vocational training program. In this case, too, we'll use tokens to try and teach work-related behavior, like how to stay on target, how to uh, keep hours, how to listen to a supervisor, things of this nature. And we use a small shop to accomplish this. Now, in the case of the retarded youngsters, we can really see the token economy at work because the focus is on very low-level, very gross behaviors. And tokens enable us to immediately reinforce these behaviors. It's important to realize that this teacher, while using tokens and immediately reinforcing the student's behavior, is also using a lot of approval, attention, and warmth, a lot of social kinds of reinforcement to encourage the youngster. Jack. Ready with it? Mm. Uh, left. You got it. Well, you really whipped through those. Okay, let's do another spin. Ah. Well, you got it before I even got <laughs> it. Yeah. Okay, what is it? Ah. Ah. Okay. Pace has graduated around 70 students. Of these 70 students, only six have gotten into trouble again. This means that our repeater rate 
kids who get in trouble after the program is less than 10 percent. Now, comparing this to other adolescent programs, the repeating rate is generally as high as 50 and 60 percent. Our token economy is highly successful.